orange and it's very very cold and I've got Archie the Archangel hello Archie how are you going I know you're going absolutely fantastic I've left Poppy at home because she was in disgrace and she ran off so I couldn't have a running around cook park could I but I've put my music on welcome to storytellers to all the new kids out there it's so great to have you have you had a really good week can you see all the beautiful yellow leaves around here? It's so much fun. And when we blow our bubbles before we start our storytelling today, we're gonna to pull the leaves up from the ground and throw them all around. Would you like to come and join me? Archie, would you like to come and join me? Throw the, the leaves around and blow the bubbles and jump and pop bubbles and have fun with me? It's a yes from Archie. He voted, absolutely, 100%. And today's a voting day in Australia where we're gonna vote for the Prime Minister for the next few years. So we're praying for the very, very, very best leadership to help us lead our country. Aren't we, Arch? Fantastic, fantastic. So are you ready to blow bubbles with me? I know. And look at the big tree behind me. So old and so beautiful. We can't climb that tree, but we can give it a great big hug. Would you like to hug that tree with me, Archie? I bet you would too. So come and join me with the bubble blowing fun. I'll be with you in just a little moment. In fact, I could go over there and grab my bubble blowing machine and we can blow bubbles together. Shall I put Archie down? Because I don't have like a prop helper person, but we'll do the very best. What do you think? I'll be one minute. Won't be a second. Here we go. Now, do you remember this from the other day? This is our big bubble blowing contraption, which makes big, big, big bubbles before we have our story. So I'd love you to help me blow bubbles before we have our story, because every time at Storytellers, that's what we have to do. We just cannot tell stories until we blow bubbles. It's so exciting. So you ready? So take your bubbles in your hand, even if you don't have them. You can pretend you've got a container and you can blow bubbles with me. So on the count of three, we are gonna blow bubbles together. On the count of three, one, everyone count with me. Two, and are you ready? Here we go, three. Oh, that was a complete and utter anti-climax. Okay, here we go. Much better, that's amazing. I love it, so good. Shall we try it again? All right, blow yours, here we go. One, two, three. over the leaves it's so beautiful and again here we go one two three oh it's so much fun i love bubbles it's so exciting it's so exciting you never know who's oh there goes the handle whoops there we go um we'll just try that again uh <laughs> you know this is live television you know <laughs> you can't go back and edit that one can you oh god let's Oh, there we go. Oh, we're really coming up. Here we go. Okay, here we go. One, two, three. Yay! Try again. Here we go. Yay! So many bubbles and the very last one. Here we go. Are you ready, everybody? <laughs> so exciting! Here we go. Yay! So many bubbles. I'm going to have to find that lid, of course, it's gone and falling off. And we'll have to attach it later on. But I'm going to run and jump in some leaves. Are you going to come run and jump in some leaves with me? Please come. I'd love you to do that. All right. One, two, three. Here we go. Pick up your leaves. Even if you're in the, in the land room, you can pick up leaves. One, two, three. Yay! I love leaves. Do you have leaves at your place? Or is it spring in your in your area. Look at that, leaves everywhere. Because in Australia, it's autumn and all the leaves are falling off the trees and it's so beautiful, isn't it? It's getting very hot in this coat. But then of course it gets very cold so I might have to put it back on again. But I might just take it off because it's a little bit easier. Just, oh no. Whoops. <laughs> Sebastian just fell off the table. Oh dear, we'll have to fix, fix it. Right, one more, you ready guys? One more time. One, two, three, and three! Yay! So wonderful, so exciting. All right, all the bubbles have been blown. 
The leaves have flown everywhere. The trees are beautiful and we're together. And that's what makes me feel so happy that we're together and we are about to tell a wonderful story. And see what's behind me? That is a glass house. And here in Orange, there's some beautiful flowers and beautiful plants in there. And I'd like to come and show you what's actually in the glass house. It's very beautiful. And that's where we're gonna tell our story today. So come with me, everybody. Come to the glass house. <laughs> so excited! Yay! Well, hey guys, welcome to the glass house. Isn't it amazing? Can you see all the beautiful flowers around me? Archie, can you see the beautiful flowers? And what's more, can you smell the beautiful flowers? Like, oh, they're so wonderful. These are chrysanthemums and they're just so beautiful. The colors are amazing. And because there's glass all around in the glass house, these flowers don't get the wind blowing all their petals off, which is so beautiful. God made all these flowers so we could enjoy them. Isn't it gorgeous? Just so gorgeous. Archie, what do you think? Do you want to flap your little wings and go and find a little flower maybe up there? The colours are amazing. What do you think, Arch? Can you come down and have a look and smell them yourself? Do you think they're absolutely amazing? I think they're amazing too, Archie. I know you could gather those little flower petals up in your little wings and gather them and take them back to my place. Then we could have a nice cup of tea together because it's getting rather cold here. Well, it's an afternoon right here in Orange and it's time to tell our story. So I'm gonna put Archie down here and I'm gonna tell you about the story we're about to show you. So let me put Archie down there. And we're gonna read a beautiful story today. Something that you may have actually read before. It's a very special story. This story is called, Where the Wild Things Are. And this is a classic children's storybook. And the story and pictures are by Morris Sendak. Thank you, Mr. Sendak. Thank you, Morris, for making the most beautiful book. I hope that you're ready for a wonderful story because I'm ready to start telling it. It's exciting. Here we go. Are you ready? Get all settled. Get your wiggles out. Absolutely get your wiggles out. And let's enjoy this together. Here we go. So lovely. Opening up the very first page where the wild things are. The night Max wore his wolf suit and made mischief of one kind. Can you see that? There's Max. He made some mischief. I wonder what he did. And another. He wore his wolf suit, didn't he? And he's chasing their little dog. What's there at the, oh, that must be a, oh, that's his tail. That's Max's tail. I thought it was a squirrel, but no, it's his tail. So he got up to some mischief. Do you ever get up to mischief? I do. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun, isn't it? His mother called him wild thing. And Max said, I'll eat you up. So he was sent to bed without eating anything. Mm. Uh-oh, Max, that wasn't very respectful, was it? Mm. He doesn't look very happy, does he? No. He looks a bit sort of, what do you think he's feeling there? I wonder. Mm. Next page. That very night in Max's room, a forest grew. Can you see his bed? And a forest growing all here. Beautiful. Hmm. And grew and grew. The forest grew and grew and grew. What do you think, Hutch? and grew until his ceiling hung with vines and the walls became the world all around. Wow, look at him. This is what it became. But he's still in his bedroom, but it doesn't look like his bedroom, does it? I wonder what's 
in heaven. And an ocean tumbled by with a private boat for Max and he sailed off through night and day. Where on earth did that boat come from in his bedroom? Do you know? I wonder where it came from. And in and out of weeks and almost over a year to where the wild things are. See Max? He's on the boat, isn't he? And this is the water and this, these are the vines. And these are the wild things. Do you have wild things in your bedroom sometimes? I do. It's interesting, isn't it? Using our imagination. And when he came to the place where the wild things are, they roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and rolled their terrible eyes and showed their terrible claws. <laughs> oh dear. I wonder what Max is thinking. Very interesting, isn't it? Well, what are you thinking? What do you think? Are you feeling scared or wondering or confused? I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Let's see if we can get this page open, eh? Till Max said, be still and tamed them with the magic trick of staring into all their yellow eyes without blinking once and they were frightened and called him the most wild thing of all. <laughs> he was quite a circuser, wasn't he? Bit of a ringmaster old Max he was. He's got spunk. And they made him king of all the wild things. And now, cried Max, let the wild rumpus Start. Mm, he's become their king. Look at them dancing to the moonlight where the wild things are. Beautiful illustrations. Climbing on the vines like monkey bars. Have you got monkey bars at school or preschool? Yeah. So many things they're doing. Look at him. Max is the king of riding on one of the wild things. Now stop, Max said, and sent the wild things off to bed without their supper. And Max, the king of all wild things, was lonely and wanted to be where someone loved him best of all. Then all around from far away across the world, he smelled good things to eat. So he gave up being king of where the wild things are. But the wild things cried, oh, please don't go. We'll eat you up. We love you so. And Max said, no. The wild things roared their terrible roars and gnashed their terrible teeth and roll their terrible eyes and show their terrible claws. But Max stepped into his private boat and waved goodbye. Can you wave goodbye to the wild things? I wonder where Max is going now. Interesting, isn't it? And he sailed back over a year and in out of weeks and in and out of weeks and through a day. Look at Max there. And into the night of his very own room where he found his supper waiting for him. That means dinner. He's finding his dinner. Because remember he was sent to his room, wasn't he? because he said, I'll eat you up to his money. I wonder where his crown is going. And where are the vines? And when he got his dinner, it was still hot. And that's the end 
of our story. Where the Wild Things Are by Morris Sendak. What did you think of that story? Did you like the story about the wild things and Max? What a beautiful story. How do you think Max felt when he was sent to his room? Mm. And where did all the vines go? And where did the boat go? That's right. Do you think it was a real boat? Yes. Or was it in his imagination? And I wonder why, even though it felt like a very long time, his dinner was still hot when he finished on his adventure to the wild things. Isn't that a beautiful story? Way to go, Max. Well done. Well done. So, I'm going to say a very big, I'm going to reach over here. It's a little bit tricky. I'm going to have to hop down now. Whoa. Whoa. Here we go. There we go. Now, back in the, back in the fray, I want to talk to you about how, a couple of things that I was thinking about today. I was thinking about how, put the book down here. And I was thinking to myself, I wonder if we could talk about how we feel about things. And today I wanted to talk to you about one thing. Hmm. I wonder how Max might have felt when he was sent to his room, like I asked just a moment ago. Do you think he felt happy? Hmm, maybe, but maybe not. Do you think he felt cranky and angry? Possible, definitely possible. Mm. Um, one thing I was thinking about today was there's a, an emotion that sometimes we feel, and it's this emotion, and I'm going to show you a picture. This is the emotion I want to talk about. It's feeling confused. Now, feeling confused means this. It's like one moment I feel a little bit like I'm going this way, and the next moment I'm feeling like I'm going another way and it makes me feel different than how I was feeling just a moment ago so a minute I'm going or oh, should I go there or or should I go there and it's like I'm wondering and not sure how I feel that's what feeling confused feels like but feeling confused doesn't last all the time and maybe Max is feeling a little bit confused because he was only having lots of fun with his mum but his mum decided it was too much wasn't it and maybe Max had to learn that lesson. And that's what, it's feel, that's what it feels like to feel confused. Maybe you feel confused sometimes. Maybe you're not sure why something happened or it's not fair or how, how come someone was able to play with that toy in the sand pit or the sand box and I wasn't allowed to. I'm not too sure, but that's what the emotion confused actually feels like. And I wonder if in the book Where the Wild Things Are, I wonder if Max felt a little bit confused. Maybe he did. Do you think he worked through his confusion? Maybe he did. And in the end, he decided, perhaps, that he was, what's another emotion? That he was happy. Can you see this picture here? This is someone who maybe feels happy. And maybe Max felt happy in the end because he travelled to where the wild things are. So I wanted to talk to you today about how it feels to feel happy and how it feels to feel confused. And confusion doesn't last, and then happiness comes after we work through our confusion. So I wanted to say thank you, boys and girls, for joining me today at Storytellers Kids, and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you again for another exciting story, again, on Storytellers Kids. Have a great day, everyone. Goodbye.